Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's National Day. His Majesty the King expressed sincere congratulations to King Salman, wishing him abundant health, happiness, and long life, as well as further progress and prosperity to the brotherly Saudi people. He praised the deep brotherly relations between the two countries and peoples and their continued development at all levels. His Majesty the king stressed Bahrain's keenness on deepening the long-standing ties and enhancing them. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's National Day. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed his sincere congratulations to King Salman and further progress and prosperity to Saudi citizens. He commended the depth of relations between the two kingdoms and their citizens. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz. Al-Saud. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister today, received the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Her Excellency Fawziya bin Abdullah Zainal, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, His Excellency Ali bin Salah al Salah at Qadabiya Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness extended his thanks and appreciation to the Speaker, Chairman, and members of the Shura Council and Council of Representatives for their ongoing cooperation with the Executive Authority to achieve the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted that cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities has further strengthened the Kingdom's legislation, supporting progress that is both wide-ranging and for the benefit of all citizens. His Royal Highness emphasized that Bahraini citizens remain central to the Kingdom's present and future sustainable development goals and that they could be sure of the commitment of Team Bahrain, comprising the executive and legislative authorities, the public and private sectors, as well as citizens and residents, in ensuring these goals are met. His Royal Highness also emphasized the need to build on the Kingdom's economic achievements in line with the goals of Bahrain's economic vision of 2030 through a timely implementation of innovative programs and initiatives including the government's priority framework that benefits the Kingdom and its citizens. For their part, the Speaker of the Council of Representatives and the Chairman of the Shura Council expressed their gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for continually supporting joint collaboration between the Executive and Legislative Authority to drive forward the Kingdom's development in line with the aspirations of Bahraini citizens, key initiatives and programs outlined within the 2019 to 2022 government priorities framework were reviewed. A number of senior officials also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister today received the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, His Excellency Samir Abdullah Nas at Qadaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to strengthening public-private partnerships to further enhance national economic development. His Royal Highness also noted the role of the private sector in driving economic growth across various sectors in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness commended the role of the BCCI working alongside the private sector in promoting development in the Kingdom and emphasized the government's commitment to continue its effective partnership with the private sector in achieving the Kingdom's wide-ranging development goals. His Royal Highness stated that the government is continuing to implement its programs as scheduled in addition to projects within the government priorities framework. His Royal Highness emphasized the government's commitment to further strengthen the Kingdom's development, turning challenges into achievements and quality opportunities in line with the aspirations of Bahraini citizens. For his part, the chairman of the BCCI expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his commitment in enhancing the private sector's contribution to the Kingdom's development, noting His Royal Highness's continued support of the BCCI efforts to improve the capabilities of the private sector. Key initiatives and programs outlined within the 2019 to 2022 government priorities framework were reviewed, and the meeting was also attended by a number of senior officials. 
under the patronage of the first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, the authority gave a presentation on sustainable sports tourism. The event was co-organized with the Medical Sports Association and the U.S. Embassy. His Highness said that the authority's work represents an application of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the keen support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the strategic planning of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He concluded by saying that the objective is the diversity of human resources through the field of sports and thanked all of the parties that assisted in organizing the event. His Majesty the King's Councillor for Diplomatic Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, visited Saudi Arabia's ambassador to Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Ahmed Al Saud, in which he conveyed the greetings of His Majesty to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud and the Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, the rest of the royal family, and the Saudi people on the 91st National Day. He expressed pride in the long standing bilateral ties and the efforts to further develop them. He affirmed that Saudi Arabia's development achievements are significant and its important role in politics, security and economics and represents a pillar of stability, security and property regionally and internationally. For his part, His Royal Highness Prince Sultan expressed appreciation for His Majesty and affirmed the depth of the bilateral ties. He wished the kingdom further proper prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. The Minister of Information and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the BIPD, Ali Rumehi, praised the approach of Saudi Arabia and its pioneering role under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in preserving the security and stability of the region. He affirmed Bahrain's pride under the leadership of His Majesty the King, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, in celebrating the Saudi National Day in appreciation of its role and rich history. Rumehi praised the bilateral cooperation in all fields and the keenness of both leaders to ensure the security and safety of both countries. He added that this occasion will only further the bilateral relations and hailed the efforts of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and his Saudi counterpart that aim to achieve further progress on the political, security, economic, social and development levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, took part in the 14th ministerial meeting of the Global Governance Group, the 3G, which was held at the headquarters of the permanent mission of Singapore to the United Nations in New York, with the participation of Saudi Arabia, which chaired the G20 in 2020. Italy, which will chair the group this year, will chair the group in 2022. The participants discussed the challenges of economic recovery after the coronavirus pandemic and promoting international solidarity. They also emphasized the need to promote coordination between the G20 countries and the 3G countries in order to combat climate change and achieve a green economy, in addition to facilitating digital transformation. As Zayani praised the Saudi Arabia's and Italy's leaderships of the G20, expressing his wishes of success to Indonesia during their presidency of the group. He added that 3G and G20 states must work together to ensure that they are able to overcome such challenges in an effective and fair manner, noting that by Bahrain is ready to contribute to these efforts through its presidency of the 2021 to 22 Asian Cooperation Dialogue chaired by Indonesia in 22. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs met at the headquarters of the Mission of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York with the Executive Director of the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, the CICA Ambassador Kira Seribe. The two sides emphasized the important role of CICA in achieving peace, security and stability in Asia and the need to further cooperation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Deputy Prime Minister, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Tilbury de Mukhtar, on the sidelines of the UNGA. The two ministers discussed the bilateral relations and ways to promote and develop them on all levels. The two sides also discussed a number of mutual interests. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Hungary, Peter Sejarto, on the sidelines of the UNGA. The two ministers reviewed the bilateral relations, stressing the importance of developing them in various fields. They also discussed a number of topics and issues of common interest on the regional and international arenas. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Friendly Republic of Nicaragua, Denis Moncado Colinders, on the sidelines of the UNGA. The two ministers discussed bilateral relations since 1991 and ways to further develop them in the service of common interest. They also discussed a number of topics and issues of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, met his Jamaican counterpart on the sidelines of the UNGA. The two parties discussed the bilateral ties in various fields, including economic and commerce, in the interests of the two countries and peoples. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the President of the International Committee of the Red Cross, the ICRC, Peter Murer. The two sides reviewed the efforts of ICRC to help the afflicted people in the world. They also reviewed global emergencies at the present time, the efforts being made to provide and deliver humanitarian and relief assistance to those in need. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the President of the World Jewish Congress, Ronald Lauder. The two sides discussed prospects for cooperation as well as the Abraham Accord and the opportunities it provided for promoting efforts to establish peace, stability and prosperity. They also emphasized the importance of making further endeavors to support efforts to establish a just and comprehensive peace in the region and to spread the values of tolerance, coexistence and cooperation among its people, in addition to discussing several issues of common interest. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain expresses its strongest condemnation to the terrorist Houthi militia's attacks on the Salaf region in Hodeida with two booby-trapped boats in a terrorist act that represents a flagrant violation of international laws and a serious threat to navigation. The Ministry commends the efficiency and vigilance of the coalition forces for intercepting the booby-trapped boats and calls on international community to condemn such terrorist attacks that threaten regional and international security and stability. Bahrain today joins Saudi Arabia in celebrating its 91st National Day, proud of their deep-rooted, close and distinguished ties. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain is proud of the global standing attained by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, thanks to its special political, security and economic weight, as well as the vision that will take Saudi Arabia to new heights under the wise leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz al Saud. Ever since its establishment, Saudi Arabia has been strong and self-confident in moving forward while honoring its leaders' commitment to building a thriving state with advanced and successful political, economic, social, financial, educational, athletic, security and military characteristics. The diversification of the economy, the empowerment of the society, the launch of mega projects across the kingdom, the openness on the world, and the robust commitment to peace, security, and stability in one of the world's most challenging regions are clear testimonies of Saudi Arabia's progress. 
The massive and ambitious projects launched under the economic vision reflect the kingdom's pragmatic view and realistic assessment of global developments and offer new opportunities to attract global investments to provide wider employment options and enhance the overall well-being of Saudi Arabia. The theme of this year's National Day is Saudi Arabia is our home, inspired by deep Saudi traditions to welcome people from diverse backgrounds, make them feel at home, and appreciate all the great and beautiful things that make Saudi Arabia feel like home to them. Following an approval by the Government Executive Committee, the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus has announced the approval of a booster shot for those 18 years of age and above who have received a second shot of the Pfizer, BioNTech, AstraZeneca or Sputnik at least six months ago. Eligible individuals could opt for the Pfizer vaccine as booster shot or the same vaccine they have received for their first and second doses as a booster shot. The task force noted that those aged 18 to 39 who have taken the second dose of the Sinopharm vaccine at least three months ago can take a booster shot instead of the initial recommendation of six months. The task force further announced the approval of a second dose of the Pfizer vaccine for individuals who have recovered from COVID-19 and have obtained one dose of the Pfizer vaccine. The task force further added that individuals who have recovered from the COVID-19 can receive a vaccine three months from the date of infection and a booster dose 12 months from the date of infection. The Director General of the Bahrain Institute for Public Administration, BIPA, and President of the International Institute for Administrative Sciences, IIAS, Dr. Raed Mohammed bin Shams, highlighted the proactive approach of the Kingdom of Bahrain in dealing with the pandemic at the IIAS and IASA Joint International Conference, thanks to the directives of the wise leadership. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Director General of the Bahrain Institute for Public Administration and President of the International Institute for Administration. Administrative Sciences, Dr. Raid Mohammed bin Shams. Hello, Dr. Raid. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about your participation in the conference and how you portrayed the outstanding model of Bahrain's proactive experience in dealing with the pandemic? Thank you very much for this opportunity to really uh, shed the light on key things that happened lately. Um, the world is now trying to realize what is really happening and how things have been done so that we can learn for the future and, and how can we really combat future kind of uh, pandemics or problems or any kind of that. And uh, the opportunity that we had to present the Bahraini model, it was through the International Institute of Administrative Sciences Conference, which is a joint conference with the, with the uh, Association of uh, Schools and Institutes of Administration, which are the two major organizations in the public administration since 1930. Um, the, the, the speech that I had was with the Shanghai um, uh, Cooperation Organization, and we have depicted that through the learning that we had in Bahrain in particular, and that we've seen it around the world, that the, there are three key components, leadership, society, and the technocrats. The leadership, which has been really seen clearly through uh, the leadership of his uh, royal highness, uh, that is determination, the command and control, but at the same time, the resilience and agility, the confidence in the team and the ability to listen in these tough times, the, the, the ability to create decisions and to take decisions timely uh, to make sure that things are done in the, in the right time and with the right people. Uh, that wouldn't have happened without the proper communication internally within the Bahrain team, but also within Bahrain in general, but also across border coordination and multilateralism. This is only one element of the game. The, the second part, which is very critical, and we have seen other countries couldn't really do it well, is the collaboration of the society, the individuals, families, communities, NGOs, their awareness, their positivity, and adherence to the um, uh, communication that has to be done, things that needs to be done on time for the safety and the security of the people. The third element are those who have really been working on the front line and on the back line. Uh, the technocrats, the medical team, which we are all in debt for, 
but also there are people who have been working uh, relentlessly, industriously uh, uh, on the back fronts, which are, the, for example, the ITT, the logistics, the financial sector, the private sector, all had really shown innovativeness uh, and, and the real dedication towards the uh, bringing all the three components together without clear leadership um, uh, taking uh, control and ability to be resilient and agile, without the societal uh, uh, awareness, and without those technocrats who can take also the lead and be part of the team, which we are in Bahrain and we are all proud of the Bahrain team, then not, we couldn't have had, we couldn't have really combated this pandemic with this um, uh, very, very successful uh, outcome in comparison to key leading uh, uh, societies and key leading uh, states around the world. We are all proud of this, and we have demonstrated this in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in front mm -hmm. of the, all of the countries within, within, within the International Institute of Administrative Sciences. Mm -hmm. Dr. Raed Bin Shams, thank you very much. And that was the Director General of the Bahrain Institute for Public Administration, BIPA, and President of the International Institute for Administrative Sciences, the IIAS, Dr. Raed Mohammed Bin Shams.